All righty, 10 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. Welcome back to the Morning Drill. We welcome our next set of guests this morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, Mark, uh, let's talk about uh, the news stories over the past couple of weeks and set up uh, our guests here this morning. Well, one of the things that has been a big deal uh, here in the area uh, has been news over the last many months that the Diocese of Erie, Catholic Diocese of Erie, was going to realign uh, the uh, school system, uh, the structure of the school system as it was presently set up. And that took place, I guess, through the last quarter of 2015 into the first part of 2016. And then the results were revealed earlier this year. Major announcement in February that uh, several schools were going to close, including Venango Catholic uh, High School. And that's why we have you folks here. Uh, You're at the uh, forefront of an effort to uh, help keep the school open or to show the Bishop of Erie that it is a viable school uh, that it should remain open. Apparently there's been uh, a development there. There's been like a 30-day reprieve. Uh, perhaps you folks could talk about that. And first let's have you introduce yourselves to our audience Oh yes, this absolutely. Sorry, kind of, of got course. into the story. My name is Greg Merkel. And I'm Amanda Slider, and we are here to represent the group that has those efforts to save VC, as Mark mentioned. Right, and that is, uh, the name of the group is what? Simply Save Venango Catholic High School. Is that right? So uh, we were talking about this effort, and uh, apparently the the bishop has relented, uh, at least for a short time, after a a recent meeting. Uh, Yes, that's correct. So let me just walk you through a bit of uh, how this process worked. Um, The bishop did release his plan to close Venango Catholic High School in mid-February. We subsequently subsequently learned uh, that this, the the procedure governing governing, uh, closing down a school is governed by canon law, uh, which is the church law. And there are specific procedures you have to follow within the church law um, in order to bring an appeal. Um, We took those steps, brought the appeal, brought the appeal to the bishop. And um, as a result of that, the bishop scheduled a meeting with us, which took place last Thursday. And so uh, Amanda and myself and three faculty members and a canon law attorney went up to uh, the Diocese of Erie last Thursday and uh, had a meeting with the bishop. Um, During that meeting, the bishop uh, did grant us a reprieve. He granted us 30 days to come back to him with a plan to uh, make the school viable and keep the school viable. And did did he present what needs to happen to to consider it viable? I mean, is there do you guys have guidelines that say okay, we need to do this, this, and this? Yes, we do. So he gave us some specific benchmarks we need to meet, and, and essentially what it amounts to is a balanced budget. But I'll give you the numbers. Um, we're not good at that in Pennsylvania, but. <laughs> <laughs> So the numbers are these. With 59 students, we have to raise $256,000 to cover our operating deficit, okay? That operating deficit includes hiring three additional positions, a marketing director, an advancement director, and a computer uh, uh, tech to run the computer lab and set uh, set up those things. And also fully funds their offices. So with 59 students, that's the amount we need to bring in. If we bring 102 students in, we don't have to raise a dime. Really? That's the break even point. Yeah. So it's kind of a sliding scale between enrollment and what uh, uh, what needs to be raised. And that has to be done by the start of the next school year? Or? Um, no. So we need to show the bishop that we can we can uh, keep the, ba- the, the uh, budget balanced next year uh, at our meeting in 30 days. Okay. And so we've been raising money and, and taking pledges and things. Uh, and let me walk the back a little bit. We've been taking pledges. We have, we've been reluctant to actually accept donations from anybody at this point but we've been accepting pledges. And if we can uh, bring uh, to the bishop um, a number that's gonna take care of our budget deficit, we're gonna be in good shape. That's been a pretty remarkable effort to this point is the um, amount that you've raised in pledges in just such a short time from the middle of February. Um, There's a lot of feeling uh, for the school in the community Perhaps you folks could talk about that. Why is there such an interest in saving uh, or making sure that the school is viable for the future? Yeah, what we've seen is just an amazing outpouring of support these last few weeks. Um, as you mentioned, the, the numbers as they come in every day are more and more amazing. $125,000 um, raised over uh, pledged for one year. Um, the budget shortfall going um, into this year was $16,000. So to see those kind of numbers come in and 
that response in a relatively very short period of time was amazing, but it's a testament to the affinity people have for the school. Um, it's not just alumni, it's people within the community. They really think that this is central to the Tri-County area. Venango Catholic serves portions of Crawford County and also Forest in addition to Venango. And they see this as an asset to com the community. You know, these kids are required to do service hours. They regularly give back to our organizations in the area. Um, it's a very positive thing on so many levels. Um, it's also great for attracting people to the area. It gives them choices in education. This is full curriculum education as it currently stands, um, K through 12, and we want to see that system be maintained. It's important. One of the things that uh, is probably uh, a factor that I haven't heard mentioned yet, but something that was much a factor in sending my own son to uh, Venango Catholic several years ago. He graduated in 2009. And you should be very proud of that. Uh, what you said, his picture's at the post office now? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, I can find those for you. <laughs> He's actually doing very well. Um, is the fact that this is almost a bargain in Catholic education here. In many cases, uh, folks will uh, take advantage of a Catholic education someplace else and pay a premium dollar. Mm -hmm. Here, not so much. Um, let's talk about that for a little bit, too. I imagine that plays into keeping the school open as well. The amount of the, the tuition. The, the tuition, I guess. yeah. Um, I know when people move here um, from outside the area, and you know, Greg um, is a product of uh, you know K through 12 Catholic education out in Chicago. They're amazed at the return on investment they get here um, by sending their kids to Venango Catholic, and also the options for assistance. You know, there is a sticker price to going there. Um, it depends on whether you're a member of a contributing parish or not. Um, so you're looking between five and six thousand dollars a year. Uh, but there is a tuition assistance program, and part of what we want want to do is expand that program, make it more vibrant, and have that opportunity be available to more students. Uh, that helps us with the enrollment numbers that Greg was talking about, and it makes it more accessible to more families, and that's really important to us. And it keeps with the mission of the school. This is about making Catholic education available to any child that would choose that with their family. And we want to see that happen. So it sounds like right now the the best path is to, to raise the money to buy you time to increase enrollment. Is that a... I, I think that's the easiest path okay. right now within our, our limited time frame to keep the school open for another year. And, and as I mentioned, the, the funds we, we will raise will be, we're investing those funds. Um, in an advancement director right. and a marketing director. And, and particularly with the marketing director, our hope is that uh, once we start getting the word, about, word out about the value of Catholic education, uh, which has really been neglected, uh, particularly in our area, um, for the past, boy, I, I couldn't even tell you how long, Mark. Um, I can, uh, yeah, I was when's the say, last I time you heard, you heard a priest uh, preach about Catholic education from the pulpit? Maybe, maybe once a year during you know, Catholic Schools Week or okay. something like that. That's yeah. about it. You know? yeah. uh, it appears to me that uh, recruiting is going to be a major effort with this. Uh, can you folks talk a little bit about the, the effort to uh, increase enrollment? Sure. I think, uh, you know, this really is a two-pronged approach. And, and to Luke's point, you know, we have 30 days to prove that we can make this viable, but it's not viable in the short term. It's viable in the long term. Right. Uh, and so that's where the recruitment efforts and those kinds of things come into play. As Greg said, we're looking at hiring somebody to do marketing advancement full time. And that's really about getting that message out to the community about what Venango Catholic offers. The education there is exceptional. And we need to get the word out. We need to get that message message out because it is something that you have to pay for but it is worthwhile and people sometimes aren't even aware that it exists out there as an option or how they can have their students be enrolled through tuition assistance and things like that I would imagine uh, this is a, a good time to be bringing this up uh, with talking about the state budget education plays an important role in that topic so this would be a time that you guys could come out and say oh hey look at us this is what we have to offer this is what we can provide and I think also as our communities look at attracting young people and young professionals to the area you know Greg and I don't have children that are at the age that they would be at Venango Catholic High School but we do have children that we're entering in at the elementary level and it's one of the things we took into consideration when choosing this area so it's important to us and I think it's important to the community that we get that word out about what's here um, and make sure that this is viable long term for people like us and our families. It's 20 minutes past the hour of 8 
o'clock. This is the Morning Drill on Stream Television and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. You're uh, obviously looking at the long term when you say both of you have kids that aren't of age to be in the high school at this point. What are you hoping to see at five years down the road or ten years down the road with this? Because that's going to be, I'm sure, something that plays into your efforts here. Yeah, I think that our goal is to hit that 102 number. You know, as we Absolutely. look at five year, what's the five year plan? The five year plan is to be at 102. That's a nice, comfortable level for the school, and it's very doable. We were there um, not too many years ago, so it's just getting back up to that level again. That's right. Um, as, recently, as recently as 2011, I'm sorry, 20, yeah, it's 20, 2011, 2012, the school had 96 uh, students. Oh, wow. So, uh, other schools have been uh, announced uh, as as being uh, closed what at the end of the school year uh, have you reached out to them are they putting an effort together to try to save their schools or are you guys sort of an island right now to trying to do this I think by we're yourselves? a little bit of an island but part of that reason is that the schools that are closing in Erie it's my understanding are, are consolidating to mm -hmm. some extent so those people have a lot of choices still available to them we're in a situation where if you want to attend a Catholic high school and you live in Oil City you're looking at a 50 to 60 mile trek somewhere Wow. Um, so the options don't exist the way they would if you live in, in Erie County. And Mark said, uh, really, uh, you guys do a really good job at, at graduating kids who take an interest and go on to do something in the church. Yes. I, and I don't know what those numbers are, Mark, but... Well, I, I, I don't know if there are significant numbers, but, you know, it's my understanding that over the years, uh, Venango Catholic has graduated a number of young men that have gone on to seminary, and that this is probably, you know, something that has played into the decision that has kept the school open for some time. Um, I know a couple of young men personally that are still progressing through seminary, and that's always good news, uh, you know, for uh, the Catholic faith to have these young men come out of, you know, a homegrown place like that, too. Uh, is that something that people are talking about when you see them and hear them at these rallies? Yeah, I think that's one of the really important things, and it's whether somebody you know chooses a life uh, as a clergy, or you know whether they go on to just be an advocate for Catholicism, for Christianity, um, for the role that spirituality plays in your home. Um, those are all important things, and they're very central to who Venango Catholic is. You know, this is an option for someone who is considering going into priesthood, as well as a Protestant family who is looking for a education that is based in the Christian tradition. Um, there's a lot of room there um, and we welcome all of those families. I'm glad you mentioned that because I uh, met a couple of Protestant families sending their kids there and was uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, I had known that that had taken place but had kind of forgotten about that. And that's really nice to know that you know there's a lot of people that consider Venango Catholic as an education choice. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about, too, is, is I did get a chance to attend one of the rallies, the one down at uh, the uh, Free Methodist Church in Oil City uh, a couple of two or three weeks ago. There's a lot of spirit there, a lot of feeling. Um, can you talk about what people are telling you? What are you hearing as you talk to people as you move forward with this? Yeah, I think there's a lot of hope out there. Um, a lot of faith, you know. This is a mixture of having faith that, you know, this is what God has instructed us to do. And I think that there's a heartfelt belief in that, uh, that this is the time to make Venango Catholic into what we know it can be and to show people how exceptional it already is. Um, that's what you're seeing, you know, that, that people really feel like the Holy Spirit has spoken and this is something that, that they're going to take up. And there's a lot of pragmatic action that comes with that in terms of raising the money. But people are giving because they believe. And I think that's important. So this isn't a pie in the sky kind of a thing. This is something that you folks believe has a very viable chance of happening. I take it without question. So right now, uh, Greg, sell us on if, if your parents are listening right now and they're saying, "Okay, boy, that does sound good," but I want to know more. Why send Why send your kid to the school? Uh, sending your kid to Venango Catholic is an investment in your child. Um, the education that is offered there is, uh, as Amanda said, exceptional. Um, we've heard stats, and, and I wish I could substantiate these, and I can't yet, but uh, what the faculty has told us is that 95% of graduates go on to college and actually complete college, complete a four-year degree. That's a remarkable number, um, if accurate, and, and we're going to do our best to substantiate that and, and get it on our website, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, we have a Facebook site right now, which is Save VCHS. Um, it's where people can find us. 
And if they want more information, if they want to get involved, that's the best way to contact you guys through the Facebook page right now? Yes. Yeah. Facebook is a great way to reach us. It's a wonderful way to follow us. We're also on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Um, you can reach out to us through our email at savechs at gmail.com if you have specific questions, and we'll get right back to you. And I'm sure it's got to be amazing for you guys to, to get you know somebody who picks up the phone and calls you, and they were a graduate you know, 30 years ago, <laughs> you know, 20 years, whatever it is, uh, and just to get their stories on what the school meant to them. Yeah, and we're even hearing from exchange students who attended from around oh, the world. Oh, wow, so really? The message, I mean, we could not, I don't think, have done what we've done without social media, you know, even 10 years ago, to just reach so many people so quickly. Um, it's really been amazing. Is this an opportunity to create some sort of uh, an alumni association? Yeah, exactly. We've created an amazing network here, and I think it's only going to grow. And and to, to have those uh, contacts, I would imagine, you know, it's good now, but to have those in the future is going to be amazing. Yeah, it's huge. Mm -hmm. So what's what's next for you guys? Is are, are more rallies planned, uh, seminars and getting information out? I mean, what what's on the docket? Uh, presently working on getting people to take action. Um, We've got some events planned for this weekend, reaching out to churches, uh, including Protestant churches, and reaching out to grade schools in the area. Um, we mentioned earlier one of our biggest challenges is enrollment presently, and uh, we want to try and address that as quickly as possible. And so getting the message out of it about Venango Catholic um, to those with school-aged children is really a goal. And, and kids uh, who attend the school, they're coming from all over. You mentioned Erie. Uh, obviously uh, is is pretty large but if if this school gets shut down you're looking at busing kids you said 50 miles 50 miles so they'd be looking at Dubois or Butler as their options or Erie wow so you're yeah. pulling kids then from all over this part of Pennsylvania aren't you yeah, absolutely um, so talk about uh, that it, it, the reach is just it, it has to be larger than just Oil City I would imagine yeah Oil City Franklin Titusville uh, Clarion area a uh, Forest County we're pulling from a lot of parishes and those parishes are supportive but we want to be more actively engaged with them we want to make sure that every child who's going through a CCD program at a Catholic parish knows about Menango Catholic their parents know about it and they know about what we offer this sounds like a lot of face-to-face -face contact um, to me, that often seems like the best way to, to get that accomplished. You were mentioning some of the outreach that you're planning. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the outreach that you're doing? Yeah, I, th I think what we're um, looking at is really having parents and students be ambassadors for the school. Uh, and, and that involves the Protestant churches and the Catholic churches and getting the word out. Um, I think one of the best ways to know about VC is to interact with a VC student, a former VC student or a parent who has a child there. Um, so we are making sure that we have a presence. Um, certainly on Easter Sunday, we will be there. We will be there with information about the school and ways to contact us directly so that you can register your child, um, sign them up if uh, you are seeking tuition assistance and get entered into that program. All those materials are going to be available in the coming weeks. Have you found that the parishes are also uh, eager to help or is it them looking for more information from you folks? I think they're looking for more information from us at this point. In, in, in prior to our meeting last week with the bishop, um, it was kind of uh, strange. It, it was strange to me in that the churches weren't really willing to help us. Hmm. Um, I mean, you have to understand that the, the priests and the uh, pastors have a, have a duty, or I believe it's a duty of obedience uh, to the church. So if the bishop decrees something, they've got to fall in line and, and right. have to respect uh, them for doing so. Um, so really, since last Thursday, a new world of possibilities has opened up to us. We can contact the churches. We can be there get involved with uh, what's what's occurring there. That's great. And have you found that Erie's been open to listening to you, or has it been, hey, this is going to happen. If you guys can do this, great. If not... The bishop spent two hours with us in that really? meeting on yeah. Thursday. Wow. And, you know, we have been going over the numbers with them. Um, you know, we put together budget projections. They put together budget projections. Um, prior to that meeting, we hadn't had a lot of conversation about those projections. We were within $5,000 of each other. So there really is a meeting wow. of the minds on what we need to do to be long-term viable. Um, and like I said, we're looking at that financially over the next five years in terms of bringing in those numbers and hitting those metrics. Um, I think they're very 
very open to that dialogue. It's been very positive. Um, we certainly appreciate everything that the bishop um, has been willing to do in terms of creating that friendly, you know, working relationship because that's really what it is. Um, the bishop has outlaid a plan for making Venango Catholic successful. It was one of the two choices initially, right? So invest in Venango Catholic or close Venango Catholic. This is us about, in, you know, choosing plan one over plan two and right. making the bishop's vision a reality for the school. Greg, Amanda, thank you so much for your time. Please come back and keep us updated on what's going on. Thank you so thank much you. for having Alrighty. us. Happy uh, Good Friday and have a great Easter. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Final look at news coming up next.